follow up on your point um, in regards to the US New Deal and you know the, the hope of um, something on the I share. We could have something something similar in the UK. I guess my provocative question would would be, you know, why is it then that almost all of our political parties uh, in the UK today are, to a greater or lesser extent, austerity parties, and uh, when uh, uh, an avowedly non-austerity leader uh, like Jeremy Corbyn wins the leadership of his party, the the, the outrage is uh, is palpable. And it would appear that he'll be pushed out at the earliest possible opportunity. So, I mean, you know, why, why do you think that is? And, and why do people accept it if that's not what we want? Um, well, I, I should perhaps say I've stopped reading newspapers. Um, as a result, my life is more positive. Um, and uh, I'm not burdened by being told what to think. Um, uh, my mum and dad are classic. Uh, 79 Thatcher voters who then changed their vote in 83 to the SDP. They, you know, they vote for all parties, they make their decisions based on who's happened. And my dad last night, still living in rural South Lincolnshire, said, oh, you know, Corbyn speaks sense, doesn't he? Um, but I'm told that the media is saying, you know, gosh, this is a disaster. And of course then, uh, to everyone's disappointment, it would seem Oldham votes and the Labour share of the vote goes up. It's possible that there's a, dis I'm hopeful, there's a disconnect between the media's analysis and agenda and, the, and what people are doing and thinking. I, I, I don't know how accurate that will prove to be, but um, I, the Human Rights Act, the surveillance, the media agendas, these are not unconnected. Um, uh, the, the surveillance, and just to jump back a little bit, the surveillance bit worries me because it's a desire to get evidence from hindsight. If someone, someone does a terrorist act, they are arrested, they are committed, and then going through their emails, it's evident that there was pre-planning and there was you know, videotapes or emails or letters. But that doesn't then say, if we search everybody's, we will find it in advance. And, and that, you know, it, 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 evidence by hindsight is not an excuse, so therefore we will search through everybody until uh, we can prevent something. Because you, you could, that doesn't, society doesn't work like that. Human being still make irrational and uh, depressing and negative and aggressive decisions. Um, yeah, I don't. The, the media agenda is so uh, troublesome to me. I, you know, I just think actually uh, the, the debate that this hall will have had about ownership uh, and editorial policy. Um, it's not unconnected, it's live today. But the problem is that actually in your desire, and I do think home ownership has driven this, your desire to get your income to a level whereby you can own your own property and hand that off, um, means that actually those debates of freedom and liberty and, and association and thought are being pushed aside because the economic reality of surviving is so high. Britain is one of the most expensive countries in the world to live in, you know, and, and we drive the cost up with every single decision we seek to make, um, um, and, and, it, and it worries me. Um, I, don't, I don't know a way out, but I think the media reporting um, is at the heart of it. I think if I, if I was able, you know, what would you do if you, for a day, actually strike at the root of the media ownership in Britain and somehow liberate that? I don't think there's a single answer, but the way in which Government and our future is reported doesn't feel to me to be open and transparent. Do you agree with my proposition that, that all parties in Britain are, are, are more or less austerity parties? And what is the impact of that? Um, well, it's kind of difficult to say. I mean, but first, actually, first, what I want to say is that there's no way I think that the New Deal could have happened in the United States today. Yeah. I mean, the United States yeah. is a very different place from yeah. what it was. Yes. in Roosevelt's time. And although Obama hasn't gone down the austerity road to the extent that the UK has, yeah. I mean, the US is even more kind of anti-collective, individualistic um, than this country. And part of the problem is that this country has been moving more towards the United States, low tax, um, you know, minimal welfare state, so-called welfare, I call social security, um, and we, I think we all should call social security, uh, reserved just for you know, the, the poorest. So, 
I mean, clearly the Tories are an austerity party. Uh, the Liberal Democrats, or well, that part of the Liberal Democrats that went into coalition enthusiastically with pro-austerity. Well, you noticed some of his arms. Exactly. I, I, I was about to say I acknowledge that not all members of the Liberal Democratic <coughs> Party, Liberal Democrats, are austerity. I'm not quite sure where you are now in the House of Commons. Um, certainly in the Lords, there are, well, there's probably kind of a real mix, because I mean, yeah. there's still a hundred, over a hundred now, Liberal Democratic peers in the Lords. Uh, and I think probably the whole gamut of liberal democratic opinion. In the same way, so the Labour Party had a very broad opinion, and as you said, you know, Jeremy Corbyn was elected on a ticket of anti-austerity. John McDonnell is clearly anti-austerity, even if he did temporarily sign up to the fiscal charter. I think God knows what he was doing when he did. Um, but I think it's very difficult because Post Thatcher, um, you know, Tony Blair in particular judged that the only way that you know Labour could get back into power was to accept much of the Thatcherite yeah. settlement. Yeah. And um, so, although I don't go along with the idea that you know Labour was as bad as the Tories in the eighties. And when I, lived, I worked at the Child Poverty Action Group in the 1980s and I saw what the Tories did and the way child poverty just soared and inequality just soared in the 1980s. But they weren't prepared to challenge, I think, some of the basic premises. And insofar as New Labour did actually do some good things, they did it by, a lot of it by stealth because they weren't prepared to make the case. So they didn't shift the, the, the general kind of, um, uh, um, I mean, they didn't, they didn't kind of create the sort of public support so that what they did would stick. So then you get things like the attack on tax credits and so forth. Um, and of course, the Parliamentary Labour Party is now mainly made up of people who came there under Tony Blair and who share his... Um, analysis and view of the world. So it, it's not surprising. I mean, it was always my fear. I mean, personally, I, I supported Corbyn for the leadership, but it was my fear that the Parliamentary Labour Party wouldn't accept him. That's exactly what has happened. Um, and it makes it very difficult. Um, so I don't know where, I mean, officially, I mean, the Labour is, in a sense, now an anti-austerity party. But many of its key members in the, in the House of Commons are, I wouldn't say they're pro-austerity as such, but they're not willing to challenge the premises upon which austerity was based. And I think that was partly the problem under Ed, who I wouldn't have said was pro-austerity, but they, they, didn't, they didn't challenge head-on the myths that the Tories promulgated when they came to power, and the, and the Tories were very effective in framing the whole debate and presenting it as Labour's failure. Labour, you know, didn't mend the roof while the sun shone, etc. And Labour didn't come back and challenge that properly, and so it, it took hold. And it's very difficult to do it now because it's just become part of the conventional wisdom that it, it was Labour's crisis. Not that it was a global crisis, actually, to his credit, Gordon Brown helped to solve, well, not to say solve, but helped to prevent it going completely, um, you know, complete collapse. But you, you just wouldn't know that. So it, it's very difficult now, I think, for people like Corbyn and, and McDonald to, to really challenge it.